in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, PL 1975, Chapter 231. Adequate notice of this regular meeting of the Planning Board of the Township, Frank uh, Township of Franklin has been provided. If everyone could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Council Councilman and Morrison? Here. Theodore Chase? Here. Erica in Sunset. Uh, nope. Sammy, nope. Jennifer? Yep. Oh, oh, you did see Sammy? Okay. Sammy's right Mustafa here. Man okay, Sammy's here. Mustafa Mans Ray? Nope. Charles Brown? Note Sammy just walked in. Yeah, I did. Okay. I marked him. Here. Thank you. Robert Thomas? Here. Mahir Rafiq? Here. Rebecca Hilbert? Here. Chairman Rossini? Here. Okay, so um, minutes for the regular meeting of September 26th. This was the last hearing of B9 Schoolhouse. Um, and you'll know that this was just provided to you a couple days ago. So if anybody... Um, doesn't um, you know feel comfortable and needs more time to read it that's certainly understandable but um, you know, I'll go ahead and, and, and make a motion to approve those minutes so moved councilman Embarrassum yes Theodore Chase uh, yes with a couple of very minor corrections that I've given to Christine as one unfinished sentence that ought to be finished and that Howard Cohen's testimony, he referred to the board, and it would be, I think it would be clearer if he were, if it were referring to the association, which is what he was referring to, in order to avoid confusion with the planning board. Okay. Um, approve with checking back with Kathleen. Yeah, I'll make sure that we, yeah. we make the changes before it gets posted to the website. Yeah, a okay. minor change. Uh, Sammy Chabon? Yes. Robert Thomas? Yes. Mahir Rafiq? Yes. Rebecca Hilbert? Yes. Chairman Orsini? Yes. Uh, we have a number of resolutions tonight. And I just want to do these not quite in the order they're in. I want to okay. take the 2024 board meeting dates first because... Um, I have a proposal that I just want to get the board's feedback on. So personally speaking, um, no, that's good. That's good. Sorry. Christine, you already made the change to have two meetings in November and only one in December. That that's, is correct. That's you what asked I was going to do. Yep, yep. Um, because we do have one more meeting this year. And frankly, by the third week of December, I'm pretty much checked out mentally and, and often physically. So. Um, I, uh, I I would rather not. So that, that was a change we made this year. So hopefully everybody likes that. Okay. But I would uh, I would I would move the board meeting dates for uh, 2024. I move second. Second. Oh. <laughs> okay. Councilman Embarrassment. Yes. Ed Chase. Yes. Mammy Chabon. Yes. Jennifer Ragnow. Yes. Charles Brown. Yes. Robert Thomas? Yes. Mahir Rafiq? Yes. Rebecca Hilbert? Yes. Chairman Orsini? Yes. Um, the next one I want to take out of order is the county study resolution, and that way we can get through all the ones where Christine can in order read out who can vote on what that are actual um, um, resolutions for applicants. So um, the resolution, I guess this is, um, we'll go to council. Um, but the, the, the intent, I, you can, it can certainly be sent to council, um, you know, basically CC'd. I think the original intent, um, um, the main recipient is the Somerset County Planning Board. Okay. And, you know, I looked at, you know, obviously we're doing a township traffic study, uh, and we want to do this larger one based on the southern Middlesex uh, uh, traffic movement and all of that. And I have no opposition to that, but uh, 
um, we do a lot of studies, <clears throat> and, and I could save everybody, and I'm sure, you know, uh, Bob Thomas, Ted Chase, other folks on this board could save a lot of money by saying the only thing that's changed in the 20 years I've been on this board is the realignment of World's Fair Drive, uh, which is necessary, not necessarily for the better, and um, the, the volume and, and type of traffic we have. Um, nothing ever seems to come of these studies. Um, you know, the county or the township or other townships or South Middlesex County townships will spend millions of dollars on them and, and nothing really happens. Even easy things um, don't seem to happen. Um, so, I mean, this is probably the last time I will look any at all favorably on a study because I don't know if there's anything else to study. There's stuff to do. But with that um, little soapbox speech, I will... I will uh, make a motion to uh, to approve. And just real quick, Mr. Chairman, so that you had some kind of editorial comments. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they're really substantive. I did. No, they were very minor, and you made them in this version we have here. Yeah, and well. I emailed the board members this mm -hmm. afternoon, and the version is in front of you. Basically, the last portion of the second whereas clause would read, and additional negative impacts, including noise and air pollution. And then the beginning of the fourth whereas clause would read, while the township is evaluate, evaluating this matter, comma, the planning board. Um, so again, relatively minor changes um, mm -hmm. that you were sent, and that's the one before you. May, may I ask how, how much we're talking about for these studies when you say that there's a... Well, this is in our study. We're really just recommending Somerset County to do a study similar to that being done by Southern Middlesex. I don't know if maybe Mark knows uh, what the Southern Middlesex County freight movement study is. That was designed to sort of study the area around um, Cranberry, Jamesburg, uh, Monroe Township, where, you know, there's so much mm -hmm. um, both residential and warehouse development going in off of 130 and those streets that, that you know are very close to whatever exit it is 910 or whatever um eight i think or less um um so, no i don't do the travel with a dirt bike a lot um so uh yeah but i don't know what the cost is mark do you have any idea um i mean there was reference to a cost is it was uh, a few hundred thousand dollars from what i remember seeing it wasn't um they mentioned um partnership with um um, the North Jersey um, uh, Transportation um, Planning, Planning Authority, Authority. and um, I believe um, New Jersey Department of Transportation, I think a federal agency as well. So I think it was, I think they, they received grants um, from those different agencies to do that study for whatever that's worth. And the implication of us not moving this forward would be what? Well, I don't know if there is an implication. The, the, the recommendation came from a board member um, having seen this study done by Middlesex County, and the recommendation was that the planning board should recommend that, the, that Somerset County do something similar for Somerset County. Yeah. So that, that, that's why the resolution was prepared to, okay. again, recommend that the Somerset County planning board consider doing the same type study, um, not just in Franklin Township, but the, the, the conversation was that, you know, some of these things obviously cross municipal boundaries yep. and county boundaries. Yep. Um, so that's why the, the draft references some of the adjoining towns. Um, that Thank also, you. you know, obviously the road, what the road networks interconnect. Yep. And, and I have to say, I share Mike's pessimism about studies that have been done over the years. But I think this is the right thing to do, the right way to approach it. Uh, and it's being proactive. And the reality is, if, you know, not, we take the chance nothing may ever happen. But nothing does happen without one of these things being done first. So at least we're showing a real concern uh, to looking after the interests of Franklin Township. I think the, the idea is good, the requesting a study. Uh, I took a quick uh, glance on the report from the county. Um, at least in the first glance, I did not see any earth shattering, groundbreaking uh, results from the study. So I echo your comments. I think these studies are done. Nice report. It looks good. But substantive changes in the real life, I doubt uh, that is we are going to achieve that. Mm. So, so you, I share your pessimism. But, you know, yeah, and I mean, that's well put. And I mean, you know, 
it was, I think that it's in the resolution somewhere. It references that so many of our problems are, you know, focused on county roads that it, it's sort of like we, we could recommend what would be done with a county road, but, you know, Somerset County doesn't necessarily have to abide by that. So if they were to do sort of a holistic study across the county um, and things don't just, you know, stop at a border, um, you know, it would probably be more impactful to do that. Uh, and I don't disagree. I, I'm just skeptical of whether any action will ever be taken in, um, you know, our... Um, at least our board lifetimes, if not our <laughs> overall <laughs> ones. <laughs> well, with with that, I mean, I I will I didn't I did move it. If, if someone wants to second, it's non-binding, oh, obviously, on the county. Sammy, second that. Yeah. Who seconded it? Sorry. Um, Bob. 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 Ted, did I'll you? just mention that a couple of days after, a couple of days after our last meeting, where Bob raised the idea. I happened to have an opportunity to speak with Walt Lane and mentioned that a resolution of this sort would be coming. And he said, yeah, he'd been getting calls for such a study from several areas within the county. So it will not surprise him to receive it. OK. Uh, Councilman Emerson? Yes. Ed Chase? Yes. Sammy Siobhan? Do I have any conflict being on the Somerset County Planning Board and approving this? That would be for Jim. Jimmy, I abstain. I abstain then. Jennifer Ragno? Yes. Charles Brown? Yes. Robert Thomas? Yes. Mahir Rafiq? Yes. Rebecca Hilbert? Yes. Chairman Arsini? Yes. Um, so the rest of our resolutions will start with uh, EWA Somerset 400. You want to know who can vote? Or? Yes, please. Okay, so who can vote is Councilman Embarson, Ted Chase, Jennifer Ragnow, Robert Thomas, Mahir Rafiq, Chairman Arsini. So I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve the resolution. I'll make a motion. Second. Second. Wait, we do two motions I, and two I, seconds? I, 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 well, whoever, I moved it, whoever said moved I'll do, it. I'll do James, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Councilman Embarson? Yes. Ted Chase? Yes. Jennifer Ragno? Yes. Robert Thomas? Yes. Mahir Rafiq? Yes. Chairman Arsini? Yes. Okay, for the Harbor Group, the only people who can vote is Council, um, Councilman Embarson, Ted Chase, Sammy Shaban, Charles Brown, Robert Thomas. Move the resolution. Second. Councilman Emerson? Yes. Ed Chase? Yes. Danny Siobhan? Yes. Charles Brown? Yes. Robert Thomas? Yes. For Canal Walk, the only people who can vote is Council Councilman Emerson, Ted Chase, Charles Brown, Robert Thomas, Rebecca Hilbert, and Chairman Arsini. Move the resolution. Second. Okay. Councilman Barson? Yes. Ted Chase? Yes. Charles Brown? Yes. Robert Thomas? Yes. Rebecca Hilbert? Yes. Chairman Arsini? Yes. Franklin 24 Developers is Councilman Barson, Ted Chase, Charles Brown, Robert Thomas, Rebecca Hilbert, and Chairman Arsini. Move the resolution. Second. Councilman Barson? Yes. Ted Chase? Yes. Charles Brown? Yes. Robert Thomas? Yes. Rebecca Hilbert? Yes. Chairman Arsini? Yes. Okay, the last one, 34 Voorhees, is Councilman Embarson, Ted Chase, Charles Brown, Robert Thomas, Rebecca Hilbert, Chairman Arsini. Move the resolution. Second. Councilman Embarson? Yes. Ted Chase? Yes. Charles Brown? Yes. Robert Thomas? Yes. Rebecca Hilbert? Yes. Chairman Arsini? Yes. I see we have no discussion items, so um, move on to public comment. So I'm going to open the meeting for general planning comments from the public. If you are here tonight for the L'Oreal USA products hearing, that will have its own dedicated opening to the public for comment on um, uh, that application. So with that, I make a move to open to the public for general planning comment. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Any general planning comments from the public? Seeing none, uh, move to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, um, our one hearing tonight is L'Oreal USA Products Incorporated, PLN 210021. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, and um, please uh, use the microphones, uh, hold them up very close, and uh, I'll continue that practice throughout. <laughs> Will do. Uh, my name is Sean McGowan. I'm the attorney representing the applicant. I'm with the law firm of Greenbaum, Rose, Smith & Davis in Roseland, New Jersey. Um, and tonight I am representing uh, L'Oreal USA Products, Inc. Uh, with an application for their existing manufacturing facility located at 100 Commerce Drive here in Franklin Township. Uh, that is block 86.03 and lot 10.32. Um, the application tonight is to expand their existing facility uh, with uh, potentially a 149,000 square foot uh, building expansion as well as stormwater management improvements to the property that would make that expansion possible. Uh, there is uh, the original application requested an, expand, an expansion of the facility by 248,000 square feet. During the pendency of the application, the applicant has reduced the size of the building uh, to be 149,000 square feet approximately. There will be testimony provided. Uh, however, uh, they are only requesting preliminary approval on the building itself. The stormwater management improvements to the property, which there will be detailed testimony provided tonight, uh, the applicant is looking for preliminary and final approval for those improvements. Uh, those improvements will help to alleviate drainage both on the property and on adjacent Dahmer Road uh, and will make the future expansion of the building possible. Um, L'Oreal has been a corporate citizen of Franklin Township for almost 40 years. Uh, they look to continue to be a good corporate citizen in Franklin at this facility. Uh, this application is solely for their benefit, not for any third party users or third parties at all. Uh, and they wanted me to emphasize their company's commitment to sustainability and green practices. Uh, as testimony will be provided, the facility will be a LEED Gold certified facility. Uh, it will be carbon neutral. It already has, solar panels are not part of tonight's application, but there are already solar panels at the facility. If the building is indeed approved at final approval later on. It will have solar panels on the entire roof and uh, overall green infrastructure and sustainability is core to L'Oreal and uh, you will hear substantial testimony on that tonight. Um, as to the details of tonight's application, uh, the 149,171 square foot expansion that's being proposed um, also comes along with uh, 101 additional automobile parking spaces. That's actually being reduced through testimony later tonight. Um, eight trailer loading docks, uh, four additional trailer spaces, a loading ramp, a utility courtyard, and then accessory improvements to drive aisles, drainage facilities, landscaping, and related improvements. On the plans, there was a request for one new variant at the property. I'm happy to say that testimony is going to be provided tonight that changes to the property can be made to eliminate that variance. Uh, so this application is essentially variance free. Uh, for purposes of the record, uh, there will be one pre-existing uh, non-conforming condition on the front, related to the front parking lot, uh, which encroaches into the 50 foot setback uh, by approximately half a foot. There's no changes being proposed or made to that section of the property. Uh, so, um, however, there was previously a requested variance uh, for an encroachment into the 50-foot setback uh, on the western side of the property uh, for a stormwater management basin. However, as, uh, as I indicated, there will be testimony provided eliminating that variance. Just was one thing based on your, on your very nice introduction is just, um, I think the board will be interested to know what improvements uh, that you're asking for in preliminary and final. Um, 
versus the preliminary approval of the building itself. Um, just just to understand, like, for some reason, if, you know, for whatever reason, you know, the building didn't get built or what, what, what is actually going to be cleared, what is actually going to be built, what sort of infrastructure is going to be there uh, to handle, say, stormwater and other things that you're saying, that um, for some reason, whatever the reason may be that the building wasn't built, what, what would those look like standalone since you're asking for both preliminary and final for those tonight? So that, that's kind of the, just the, the instruction I would provide. Yes, Mr. Chairman, and that's part of uh, the plan testimony from our site engineer. Um, as far as the roadmap, as far as the witnesses that we're going to present tonight, uh, first we're going to have a short presentation from the architect, um, Claudio Breda. Did I pronounce your name right? I'm sorry. Um, and then after that, our site engineer, Ahmad Tamus from Boer Engineering will provide the bulk of the testimony. Uh, we also have a traffic engineer present as well as representatives from the applicant. However, we do not plan to provide direct testimony from them. Uh, they're basically here to answer questions uh, if the board has questions for them. Um, just like to put on the record that uh, our notices were published and mailed to the nearby property owners and submitted in advance of this meeting. Uh, so I believe we do have uh, jurisdiction. Uh, and of course, we are uh, requesting that all waivers related to the application uh, be granted so that we can be deemed complete for purposes of the hearing tonight. I, I don't think we would be hearing you if we didn't deem it a complete, right, Mark? Christine, you received. I'm sorry. I was. I was in. Uh, deemed complete. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. I, I was. I was looking. I was looking. No, no, it's fine. And, uh, I thought like, they were asking about the notice. We're asking, no, we're asking about both. They want to know if the notices and the publication are accurate and they want to know if they're deemed complete they, they, they were deemed complete yes they would not be before this board if they had not been deemed that's complete. what the chairman said christine, <laughs> sorry christine notices an affidavit yes, of publication did. good thank you very good yes, he thank sent me you notice. very much uh and with that mr chairman if you don't have any further questions for me i am going to call our first witness sounds good raise your right hand please solemnly swear to tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth so help you god Name and address for the record, please. Can you, can you use the microphone, please? Sure. Is this on? Yeah. Uh, Claudio Breda, that's B-R-E-D-A. I'm a senior project manager with Where Malcolm, located at 110 Edison Place in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, Mr. Breda, could you please provide uh, the board with the benefits of your license and experience as an architect in the state of New Jersey? Uh, sure. So uh, I'm a licensed architect in New Jersey as well as three other states here in the East Coast. I've been practicing architecture for over 21 years now. Um, and I've appeared before this board. Actually, I was here in April for another project. So, And I'm a graduate of uh, Pratt Institute in Brooklyn. Very good. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I present to you Mr. Brett as an uh, expert in the field of architecture. Yes, we accept you. Very good, thank you. Uh, so, Mr. Breda, um, the applicant, L'Oreal, has uh, requested that you design a, uh, an expansion to the building of approximately 149,000 square feet. I'm going to ask you to go into uh, some brief detail about that building. Uh, but before that, we want to introduce uh, exhibit A1, which is actually an engineering exhibit. It's an aerial site plan. Uh, however, uh, we're going to introduce that before Mr. Breda's testimony because we want to emphasize uh, the screening that's going to be in place and there's going to be substantial testimony from uh, the, the site engineer as to the screening. Uh, but before we show the building, we wanted to emphasize uh, the screening along Dahmer Ave and then uh, to the north backside of the property as well. All right. Well, let's get a foundation for it. Prepared by whom? This was prepared by Bowler Engineering. Oh, Bowler Engineering is here. Can we hear it from them? <laughs> I need to be... Uh, yeah, we will swear you in. Raise your right hand. Solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God. I do. Name and address, please. Uh, Ahmed Tamuz, um, branch manager for Bowler Engineering, 10,000 Mid-Atlantic Drive, uh, Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Is A1 that's being proposed, was that prepared by your firm? That is correct. Under your direction and control? That is correct. Thank you. A1. And, and are you a licensed uh, engineer in the state of New Jersey currently? Uh, I am. I am licensed uh, professional engineer in New Jersey for over uh, 15 years. Uh, graduate of Widen University. Uh, 
I believe 1996 and a master's of structural engineering in 2001 as well. And you provided testimony before boards, zoning planning, land use boards in the past? I have. Okay. Thank you, sir. Accepted. Very good. Now that we have uh, admitted the aerial site plan into uh, evidence, uh, Mr. Bredo, would you like to just to describe where the proposed building is going to go in, and the screening? Uh, sure. So just to give a, a, a way the land, so to speak. So this is the existing building here where my mouse is hovering over, and our proposed addition is north of that. Uh, again, this addition is uh, sort of essentially what L'Oreal is currently doing, which is um, a combination of manufacturing, packaging, and uh, storage um, of their products. And that's depicted in tan color. That's correct, yes. Thank you. So this is the addition depicted in tan. Uh, and then the additional screening, uh, both for visual as well as acoustics, is really what the color uh, is depicted. Um, the, this is overlay over the uh, photographs, so the photographs is the uh, existing trees or landscaping that's remaining, and the, uh, the color version is the, the landscaping that is being proposed for the, the additional buffer. Thank you, Mr. Brett. And then on the aerial, you can see the proposed building that we're asking for preliminary approval on. Do um, you just want to point that out? Sure. So this is the... The, again, the, the addition for the preliminary approval, which also includes this small building here on the, the right-hand side. This is a fire pump house uh, to support the addition for the fire suppression. Very good. Now, can you please get into the details of the building itself, things that are typically more architecturally related? Uh, sure. Uh, right here with, so... So, so, Mr. Breda, the plans that you're showing now were submitted to the board already? That's correct, yes. Correct. With no changes? No changes. No embellishment? No, no colorization. Okay. So, as noted before on the aerial, the dark gray here is the existing building, and the lighter gray here is the proposed addition, along with the fire pump house, which is this small building here on the right hand. And as I noted before, this is really just an extension of what L'Oreal is currently doing. Uh, it's more manufacturing, uh, packaging, and, and storage of their products. Um, Can you just orient us a little bit? Because, um, I mean, I, I'm not far um, from this site, although not within notification um, distance, apparently. But um, can you just point out where the current bays are uh, and where the new bays would be? Um, bays meaning the, the, dock, the, the docks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're all here on the right-hand side. Okay. And the, the new ones that we're proposing will also be here along the right-hand side, right where my mouse okay. is. That's helpful. This is just an enlargement area of the proposed addition. Uh, again, this is preliminary, so all these interior spaces that have not been fully developed at this point. Uh, there's just some uh, exterior um, elevations uh, depicting what the exterior uh, materials will be. As, as of now, since this is preliminary, we're just proposing some type of precast panels uh, to match what the existing building is currently, because essentially that's what it is, is it's precast panels. Although there are some parts of bu the, the building, excuse me, that has a concrete block, which we also have some concrete block here on this portion of the building just for, for the specific purpose for that room itself. And then this is just a, um, an axonometric, which really depicts uh, the addition in, in context with the existing building. So the dark gray is the existing building, as I noted before, and then the lighter tone here with a little bit of color of beige is the, the proposed addition. Um, side view, uh, same, just a different angle. And as you can see here, the, the dock doors here. You can't see here because it's cut off, but the other dock doors are here along the side. That's pretty much it. Very good, Mr. Breda. Thank you for orienting everybody to the building. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that wraps up my direct for uh, Mr. Breda. So do you have any questions? I'll turn it back over to you. Um, do we have any architecturals that can be testified to in terms of what the addition would like, what the outside materials would look like, what, what are we getting? <clears throat> yeah, so as I noted before, right now the intent is to, to match 
as close as possible to the existing building. The existing building is currently um, precast panels mm -hmm. uh, painted with a, a cooler beige tone, if you will. So essentially, we're doing the same here. Uh, it's probably not depicted very well here on the rendering, but you can see here on the, oops. You can see here the, the various reveals, which is typical of precast panels, and the, the goal is just to be painted to come close to the, the existing building. And again, just be standard uh, aluminum frame windows, similar to what they currently have now. Um, and then obviously your typical dock doors. And then Mr. Bretto, when the applicant comes back for final approval on the building, that's when, you know, very specific materials will be provided and testified to? That's correct. Okay, yes. okay. I, I, thanks for reminding me. I forget you got another step with the building, so we'll hear more. Okay. No problem. Any board questions for the architect? Just, just one question. What is the, um, and, and this may get into the um, engineer's testimony, what is the height of the building? Right now, the proposed addition is being proposed as 50 feet above the, the finished floor. Okay, and is that to to the roof or is that to the top? Is there a parapet? That's to the top of the parapet, which will be the highest point of the roof. Okay, so then how high would the parapet be? The parapet right now we're assuming is probably two to three feet, depending on when we design the, the roof slopes. Okay, so... So, so to the actual roof of the building is about 48 feet? Correct, yes. Again, it's just to conceal some of the mechanicals as well as the solar panels, et cetera. Okay, so that's actually the second question. Can you speak to the, the mechanical equipment on the roof and if they'd be visible to surrounding properties? No, the, again, the, the building, due to the size and the massing, uh, the proposed equipment will be far in from the perimeter of the building that they would not be vi visual. So just to follow up, um, so when the um, civil engineer testifies, we do need to hear a little bit more about the uh, building height, because the building height is measured from the average finished grade. Um, and the reason why that's important is if a building is taller than 50 feet, the buffering is actually larger. So we do need to have confirmation on the record that they are going to be 50 feet. And it sounds like you're heading that way. So, well, Mr. Bretta, you know, considering this is a preliminary approval for the building, um, you know, can the applicant commit to keeping the building underneath 50 feet? We could certainly explore that, yes. Well, exploring it and doing it are two different things. The, the applicant has indicated that they are comfortable with that. Okay. Thank you. So yes. So just for purposes of clarity, the applicant is committing that upon final approval, the building will be no greater than 50 feet to meet the requirements of the boards That's good. of, of the, the uh, township's ordinances. Yeah, that makes things a lot simpler because then if you need a larger buffer, you get less building and, and then you get into a whole bunch of other things. So. Yeah, and, and everything tonight, uh, all the site engineer uh, testimony that's going to be provided uh, it hinges on the site layout that has already been designed. Gotcha. Yeah, and Mr. Chairman, I think that would, that would negate the need to hear more testimony from the engineer on that. I mean, they've indicated that they'll comply, so between well, the they're going to come back for final, the building for a final, so yeah. so I'll have yeah, to show we, that on no. the plan submitted for final. Yeah, sounds good. So I had a, just a quick uh, a curiosity question. Um, it seems like there was a prior plan. Uh, there are some changes to the uh, prior plan, and for example, Mm, the comment here in the report, proposed sound wall uh, was, uh, there was a sound wall proposed in the previous plan and it was removed. There, there's going to be some testimony on that coming from the site engineer. Uh, is that something that, that the applicant is willing to reconsider? Okay. All right, the chairman and I have uh, a, a similar question. Why preliminary only on the building? Uh, because the building itself hinges upon getting the uh, stormwater management approvals and those infrastructure approvals final, finalized. Uh, it's unclear exactly when the applicant will be finalizing the plans for the building, but they pretty much want to preserve their rights to uh, build uh, the expansion within the period that's permitted if they receive preliminary approval. Period of protection. Period of protection, okay. exactly. All right. Okay. Three years. That makes sense. Okay, and you could um, 
I guess turn it over. Um, I'm sure we'll hear more from your architect at the final for the building. Um, That's right, and you know the applicant is fully cognizant of the fact that they're going to need to uh, come back to this board to receive final approval on the building in the pub house. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Beta. Mr. Tamus, uh, you have already provided your credentials and been sworn in, so we're all set there, right, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Clarkin? Yes. Correct. Very good. So. Mr. Tamus, uh, the applicant, L'Oreal, uh, has come to Bowler Engineering um, to help design uh, the site plan for an expansion of the facility. Um, your firm, Bowler Engineering, has designed uh, those infrastructure improvements that are required. Uh, in your own words, could you please uh, explain to the board uh, the site plan that you've designed? Certainly. Um, I'll start by... Um, um, referring to exhibit A2, which is an aerial exhibit of the site and the surrounding area. Uh, this plan is dated November uh, 29, 2023, and prepared by our office. Uh, no revision date, and as noted in the plan, the north is uh, pointed slightly uh, based to the top of the page. It's colorized in part. Was that added for tonight, or was that with the original plans? The colorized area, we wanted to emphasize certain areas on the plan, and I'll go over that. Uh, these are some of the drainage improvements yeah. that will be, uh, um, we are proposing on the plan to address some of the drainage issues on site. As then, it, then it'll be A2. Uh, Correct. Into the record. Correct. This Correct. is Exhibit A2. Okay. Thank you. So the property is located at 100 Commerce Drive. Uh, it is block 8603, lot 10.32. The total lot of the entire property is 29.5 acres. The property is located in a BI business and industry zone. Uh, the site is bordered to the north by residential properties uh, along Gary Court, to the east by uh, similar industrial uses, to the south by Commerce Drive and further industrial uses, and to the west by Dahmer um, Road and residential property. In its current condition, the site houses the existing L'Oreal facility with associated loading locating along the eastern portion of the property. The existing loading dock, if I would zoom in on the plan, uh, you'll see the trailers along the eastern um, portion of the property. You see the surface solar panels, again, uh, they're to the east of the property, and in the same location, there's existing stormwater management facility at the same location. Um, the existing parking, whoops, the existing parking along the south of the property is most of the cars are along Commerce Drive, and then we have some parking along the western portion of the property that is along um, Dahmer Road. Um, there is also a regional basin on the south side of Commerce Drive that was developed to handle the industrial development for the entire complex, uh, along with another um, regional basin um, right along Jiffy Road. These two basins handle the majority of the runoff associated with the entire industrial complex for the area. The site in its current condition as noted on the aerial. We do have two access points for the car um, and on Commerce Drive, and we do have an, one access for the truck trailers leading to the east of the site. There is an existing um, emergency access, secondary access off of Dahmer Road. Uh, we are proposing to uh, close that off for the emergency access and um, revegetate the area to provide the buffer needed there. Uh, we will, um, based on the plans, the intent is to provide a emergency access off of Dahmer, uh, and the final detail of that is part of the final plan when we come in with the final application. The previous applications shows the improvements there. There were some comments, uh, and we will work with your professionals to address that to their satisfaction. The second exhibit, 
which is exhibit A1. This exhibit is a color rendition of the actual site plan that was submitted uh, to the board back in November. These, the plan is dated October 2021st with the last revision date of November 7, um, 2023. The north is pointing also to the north. Um, this is a colorized version of the plan. Uh, I'll go over the um, simplest uh, modification we are proposing. This shows the this shows the closure of the existing access, emergency access off of Dahmer. It shows the area being replanted and it shows that area being vegetated. So that will improve the buffer along Dahmer and eliminate the emergency access from that location. Also, it shows on this location, it shows a, an extension of Commerce Drive to Dahmer. This extension will have a, uh, it's a gated access with a knockbox and it's only accessible to emergency vehicle. So this will not be open to the public motorists. The applicant is proposing to expand the existing facility by constructing a total of 149,171 square feet. That is reflected on this plan by the area uh, in 10. Also, we are proposing a approximately 1,450 square foot pump house um, that is uh, along the eastern property line. And we are constructing eight bays, an extension of the building along the eastern property line as well. The total building area that includes the existing and the proposed improvement is 455, 180 square feet. That is the total area of the building, including the fire pump house when all construction is completed. The construction of the building itself, that is, uh, we are seeking preliminary approval only on this building. Uh, and I will go over the uh, requested uh, preliminary and final improvements on the plan. If we go back to our exhibit A2, uh, one thing I neglected to mention. Along the western property line, close to Damo Road, you see these two colorized green areas. These are two small pockets of wetlands. Uh, these wetlands formed as a result of poor drainage condition. Uh, there is a small drainage pipe uh, near the wetland that is, uh, based on our evaluation, is undersized and continue to cause a drainage problem to L'Oreal and its facility. So part of this application, we are proposing to remedy the situation here uh, we are proposing to fill the wetlands and construct a stormwater management to be able to hold the runoff and then attenuate it, release it at a slower rate. That is uh, a rate that is the existing pipe would be able to handle. We have submitted an application uh, to NGDEP for verification of the wetlands, um, um, letter of interpretation, and for filling those isolated pocket of wetlands. And we received that permit uh, I believe a week or so ago. A copy of the approval and the permit will be provided to the township and its professionals. What, what, uh, what did the letter say? Well, I mean, in terms of rating of those, those wetlands, what did they classify them as? Intermediate value, they did not have any buffer. They were formed because of the water condition, the drainage condition on site, and DP allowed us to fill those wetlands. And so your proposed detention basin is shown here in A1 would essentially be where those wetlands currently are. Correct. We, we do have an intermediate plan, you know, based on conversation we've had with, with uh, Mr. Haley. Uh, we made some refinement. Um, unfortunately, we had the conversation today, so we did not prepare a plan to depict what those improvements are, mm -hmm. but we're hoping that we will be able to describe it uh, to the board, uh, to uh, um, convey the message what we're trying to do to comply with the buffer requirements and also address the drainage situation. Okay. 
And that would eliminate the variance that was previous. Right, required. right. And of course, we would we would make any uh, resolution or approval tonight uh, for your final final uh, part anyway, conditioned upon satisfying uh, those um, stormwater requirements. Correct. Yeah, the applicant is prepared to accept the condition, of course, of, of plans, resubmitted plans and resolution compliance that meet everything that they're committing to tonight on the stormwater management uh, infrastructure improvements uh, that they are seeking preliminary and final on tonight. Yeah, I noticed the uh, CME engineering report notes the size of the pipe, but I think you just alluded to most likely um, how that would be addressed and, and, and all of that. So, um, yeah, that would all have to be, that would all have to be satisfied, but... Um, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Tom, was the the pipe is not an issue that's going to be addressed on resubmitted plans. Correct. I mean, we we had a conversation with um, the CME engineer, and um, we have no objection to any of the comments in his letter. We'll work with his office to address all the comments to satisfaction, and those um, conditions would be a condition of the plan approval. Mr. Chairman, just a question. I, I guess I have a question of 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 the why. <laughs> if you have an existing wetlands um, that's forested, you know, and is providing the buffer, why, why are you proposing to remove the wetlands to replace it with essentially a constructed stormwater basin? The basin, what's happening right now, that area is a very low laying area that is approximately a couple of inches in depth with a, I believe it's a 10 inch or a 12 inch pipe that is connected to the existing infrastructure on Damo Road. So the area doesn't have depth. And larger storms, or when it rains, the water just fills up the entire area. Any in there, the, uh, the area creates mosquito uh, breeding habitat. And what we are proposing as part of this application, this is in the exact vicinity that where the extension road, what we call the loop road, will be constructed. You know, this wetland, um, we need the basins basically to release the water at a smaller rate. The pipe can't handle the volume of water getting to it. So we have two options. Option one would be to make the pipe larger and then evaluate the existing infrastructure in Damar Road and see if we have to continue upgrading the infrastructure to make the pipe larger or we create a mechanism to uh, a containment field, if you will, at a basin that holds the water, release it at a, small, a slower rate that the pipe can handle without having it um, infiltrate into the ground and create this, this wetland condition. If this area is not treated, it will continue to grow and will continue to impede development of this area. And, and Mr. Tabus, uh, in preparation for this, it was, I was made to understand that there are drainage issues off this property, directly adjacent to our property, to L'Oreal's property. Uh, and these improvements will also help to alleviate the drainage issue, issues on those adjacent properties, correct? That is correct. <laughs> Good. I have one question, Mr. Chairman, if I could. Please. On your sheet C301, you have your zoning table in the upper right-hand corner, and below that you have a parking table. And then you've got a list of variances you need a variance for coverage and for driveway width. That just seems to be inconsistent with what we're being told tonight. So bear with me. Uh, the buffer has been addressed. That, is, that variance is, is not needed. And I will explain what, what, is that, what is that occurring. This, this variance refers to the improvements along the main entrance to Commerce Drive, and I was, um, that was going to be my next um, clarification on the plan. Currently, the existing drive is, I believe it's about 24 foot wide, maybe it's 28 foot wide, which allows for one lane in either direction. Uh, and that continues, and from uh, talking to L'Oreal, the operation, and I believe some concerns were brought up by Tension professionals that sometimes the truck traffic act, the truck traffic actually backs up on Commerce Drive, so to alleviate that situation, we are updating the plan to have <clears throat> a 
um, that one way in and one way out into a three ingress driveways coming into this site. So you'll have three driveways coming in. The original plan that was submitted that shows the expansion of the larger building had a much wider driveway. Since then, that has been reduced to a width that is compliance with the township and the variance is no longer required. So when so, you file revised plans, you'll take that off, so there's no will. confusion. What about the coverage? The coverage is also no longer required since okay. we are proposing a smaller building. You'll take that off as well? Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. And you mentioned at the outset the parking, uh, you were going to address that tonight in your testimony and we won't need that variance either, correct? Correct, and that would even reduce the uh, impervious even further. Of course. So, <clears throat> so this plan shows the three lanes going in, controlled access, and one egress lane going to the property. As we continue moving north toward the property, we'll get into the first portion of the project that we are seeking a preliminary and final approval on, which what was referred to the plan as phase 1A. So currently, um, L'Oreal received large um, tanker trucks, or tanker trucks that bring um, liquids, uh, chemicals that is necessary for the continued operation of what they produce on site. Uh, what we are proposing to do here is, a, in essence, a spill prevention plan. And we do have a plan that was submitted as part of the uh, Nope. You bear with me. Um. So, um, uh, Mr. Tom, was the plan that you're showing now is part of the submitted plans and already part of the record? Correct. Uh, this plan is Plan C-401 that was provided back in November. It's an intermediate Phase 1A plan. Um, and in essence, this shows the uh, spill prevention area. Um, that is, we are proposing to the west of the existing building. <clears throat> and to, not trying to oversimplify it, but simply, this is a rubber curb. It's, a, it's about a six or nine inch rubber curb that surrounds the area where the tanker will be located. So in the, in the event there is a spill, that spillage will not make it to the existing inlets or the existing basins. It will keep it confined within the outline shown here. Uh, that is uh, something we are seeking preliminary and final on, and that would be one of the first thing that, that L'Oreal will, will construct uh, um, if approval is granted by the board. The other item that we will be seeking uh, preliminary and final approval would be the area of the basin. This is the, the light blue represent the isolated pocket of wetlands. And as stated, when we um, done the calculation, the stormwater management calculation, we realized that we needed um, about a three foot deep basin to handle the runoff associated with that area to store the volume of water and allow the water to discharge to the existing pipes on downward drive. Um, this area shows the basin encroaching into the 50-foot buffer. Based on the conversation we had uh, with Mr. Healy uh, this afternoon, uh, what we are proposing to do, we will honor the 50-foot residential buffer and the basin will not be located in that. In essence, this basin will slide to, will move in an easterly direction uh, about 20 or 30 feet, which will guarantee the 50 compliance with the 50 foot residential buffer and um, allow for the proper drainage of the facility as well. Um, we do have the um, NGDP application approved. We have the permit to fill the wetlands and construct the basin. Um, we are in the process of applying to the Soil Conservation District, and upon receipt of that permit, uh, copies will be provided to the township as well. So sliding the basin over, as you just described, how will that affect the parking that was shown on the plans that were submitted? 
so I will get into the parking changes. Um, As, as we continue in a northerly direction uh, along the proposed improvements, we'll pass by the existing loading dock, and then we'll get into the area of the proposed expansion of the building. Um, at the northeast point of the proposed building, we do have the proposed loading docks, which we have eight bays that is constructed. The gray area represent the a heavy duty pavement that is needed for the truck traffic. Uh, there was a, um, a question by one of the board members about the previous plan that showed a um, sand attenuation wall. Um, further reviewing those plans, um, that was incorrectly shown on the plan. Um, we have proposed um, sand attenuation walls um, for industrial development. And my experience, those walls exceeds the height of 12 to 16 feet. That wall that was shown on the previously submitted plan was three to four foot wall. It was a retaining wall to minimize the disturbance to the wooded area and also to minimize, to allow for the proper grading of the lot. Since then, we um, have designed the property to eliminate the wall along this, uh, the eastern side of the property. However, we do have some walls uh, along the northern side of the property. None of the walls I propose are sand attenuation walls. They're mainly um, uh, retaining walls to retain the, the dirt, the earth, and minimize disturbance to the, uh, the vegetated area and maintain the buffer. In discussion with um, your planner, um, Mr. Haley, uh, we, we discussed the possibility of constructing a wall along the northern side of the um, loading dock. That wall will extend from the edge of the concrete area all the way to the edge of the building. That wall uh, will be uh, constructed of similar material to the building, and the height will be the height that is needed to um, roughly 10 to 15 feet, and that height is to hide the height of the truck trailers. Uh, the exact height, I'm not 100% certain what that height is. I believe it's around 10 foot. That wall will uh, help with the sand attenuation, but also will help buffer or screen the aesthetics of the load and dock from the residential zones as well. Uh, that is not reflected on the plan. Uh, that is something that was discussed earlier this afternoon, and we are agreeable to providing that as a condition of the approval. So let me get this straight. <clears throat> you're <clears throat> you're going to propose a smaller wall <clears throat> to buck the, the loading base, but not a, a larger one in back abutting the residential structure? Correct. So, I don't know that I'm a lot in favor of that. <clears throat> I mean, I live right in back of Frito-Lay. We have a big wall. It works. I don't even get a potato chip wrapper in my yard. I mean, it's landscaped and it's 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 fine. And it, it it's because there's bays. The building across the regional basin next to Frito Lay does not have. It's just an office building. There's no so there's no wall at all. It's just landscaped. But that wall has worked very well. And when my development was built, um, I was not an original owner of the house, but I was told um, by my neighbor who is that they insisted on it. It only covers Frito-Lay. There's no, because then the rest of the are just office buildings or lighter commercial uses. But I mean, to the general, speaking of this, um, I told, as I told you at the outset, very familiar with this area. And, um, you know, I just don't understand why there has to be such an intense use at the back of the property. Why couldn't you move those loading docks to be more contiguous with the ones that are already there and, and get that out of the residential way and the building stops where it stops and, you know, I don't know. Why do you have a bunch of green space and trees and then these loading docks? Why don't you invert that and all that parking at the back could still be parking in the front or, or elsewhere or on the side? Um, why does it have to be so hard up against uh, residential uses and, and woodlands that, you know, I think 
um, affect quality of life. I mean, you know, that's, that's just, I don't understand why you wouldn't minimize that uh, rather than put up walls and things. So I, I can't speak to the interior, interior operation of the building, but looking at the existing building, uh, you can see that the manufacturing part or the loading area of the building typically toward the rear. You see the existing building that right. the loading docks, they're not along the front, they're along the rear of that. This is consistent with that and maybe um, uh, no, I know they're on that same side, but why not make them like right contiguous to that and not have it so close to the residential, not have that parking back there, leave as much undisturbed space between the end of the building and, and the residential area. Um, it, this just almost seems like it's more or less maximized to impinge the, on, on the residential area. Um, and, you know, there's also a railroad line that goes back there, right, part of the Conrail line. Right. I remember the days when they used to push a train through once a year just to keep the, um, literally push it through. Um, you know, those, those tracks cross Clyde, they cross Veronica, and they've since been filled in. But the tracks and the trussle are there. Uh, you can walk back there and see all that. And, and you know, it's, it's a nice wooded buffer. Um, you know, and, and, I mean, it just seems like the layout is, is maximized to intrude upon that. And, I mean, I'm just... I, I can't believe there couldn't be a better way to do this. I, I mean, why, why not push, push the, if you're going to fill the wetlands, why not push the basin back more toward the residential area and have that be, you know, um, more or less wild. You can landscape a basin and make the building more... Horizontal. Exactly. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, I mean, there's... Uh, it just doesn't seem to be, like, the best, the best layout, I mean, that I can think of. Can I get the sense that you know that? No, uh, no. You, you do know that, quite frank. It's it's a simple design. Uh, this seems very intentional to intrude upon a protected area. I'm at Gary Court every weekend. I know the people housed there that you intrude upon, upon who are very proud to move there. They've been making improvements over the years to their home, and to even think that you wouldn't put a wall to protect the house is just unacceptable. You could have easily laid this building out in a horizontal fashion, moving everything closer to the existing building without going further into the protected wetlands. I and also because we're big on active transportation in this township, who's not to say that that former railroad track doesn't become a tourist destination for active transportation throughout the entire region? If you push that building closer, no one will want to be there with noise, sound, and air quality resulting from these vehicles. So just a little more consideration than that. I appreciate your, your comment, and, and Mr. Chairman, I can assure both of you that's not the intent. We, when, when this, this was laid out, the intent is not to do the most damage. This, the, the current operation, and I, I don't have a floor plan, the operation of the building itself, the internal mechanism, how an assembly line works you know, how the chemical, how the manufacturing inside the building comes in, it's in line with, you know, how the equipment, how the manufacturing is laid out in, in a long-running line. And we do not have the final plan for that. If, if the concern is, is the, the aesthetic and, and the noise attenuation, I mean, we have representative of L'Oreal here. We can discuss the possibility of having a, a wall barrier along the property line if that is what the board desires. I want you to go back and rethink this plan because while it might not have been your intent to do any of that, right, you know, so I'm going to screw the residents, the max, so let's do that. Um, I get it. But the, in the intent is different from the actual result. The result is that. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I'm, wouldn't, I tell you right now, uh, you got to go rethink this. The one thing that I will say in, you know, my conversations with the applicant and, uh, and Bowler Engineering and, and Mr. Tomus is uh, maximum consideration was given to screening and trying to be sensitive to the residents. Not to, uh, you know, um, um, say you're wrong, Mr. Chairman, and of course, if that's what you're directing the applicant to do, I'm going to ask for a recess and discuss with the applicant. Um, but uh, I just want to be clear that from my perspective, screening and uh, trying to uh, prevent any intrusion into the nearby residence was of the, the 
foremost uh, consideration in the development of the plan? Uh, I mean, I think, well, I mean, it, at the very minimum, you need to do a, a heck of a lot better job with any type of screening, but I really want you to rethink the layout because I don't understand why, just as Charles said, that building couldn't be more horizontal with a detention basin. You're going to fill it anyway, whether you fill it and put a detention basin there or whether you fill it and put, you know, part of the building and it doesn't matter, it's filled. Um, and, and then your basin goes towards the back. You have really minimal disturbance. The basin can be landscaped and is sort of a, a, a buffer into itself. Um, pipes can be extended. I mean, I just don't believe there's not an engineering solution to having a better design of this building. Uh, with that, I would request a five minute recess. Granted. Thank you.
right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, your, uh, the board and your comments were uh, very direct, and my client has agreed that they would like to go uh, take a look at everything and see if things can be shuffled around, uh, or at least you know, provide a little bit more room, maybe shift some of the trailer loading docks. Um, there are some logistical challenges uh, with the operations at the building, uh, where the utilities come in, uh, that the building is not going to be able to be made completely horizontal. That being said, um, you know, they are, would like to carry tonight's hearing uh, to take a very hard look to see if some improvements can be made to minimize the encroachment towards the rear of the property. Um, and uh, therefore, we would like to carry tonight's hearing. Uh, if possible, we would like to carry it to uh, maybe a hearing date in March so that we do not need to re-notice. Work, work with our specialist here. Um. <laughs> what do you mean not to re-notice? Because we can announce it tonight. We can announce it tonight. Right. I, 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 we would like to carry to March. I just don't, I don't know the meetings okay. off the top of my head in March. No, I was going to tell you, somebody oh, dropped off it. on February 7th. But if you want to move to March, I think we, we already have. That's going to be too tight for the changes that, that we we're going to make. We can't do March because we have uh, two, one, we have hearings, big hearings, March 6th and March 20th. The next available would be April 3rd. But we all know this far out that <laughs> we can't guarantee. I mean, I would just try to, um, you know, work to uh, see whether or not we could accommodate on those dates. Um, and I mean, I would, I would come back with a preliminary and final for everything. Uh, let's see it holistically. I think that works best for the board. Not to buy, not to bifurcate. Is that is that possible? Because I don't think the building itself is an issue. I mean, it's a permitted use in a permitted zone. Um, the things that you want to look at, based on our direction, are, are exactly what we want you to look at. We don't expect maybe that for the reasons you just stated, we'll be able to get get you all know, perfect, but we'll, we'll find a find a happy middle ground. I don't have any issues with the building or the thought of expansion. It's it's in the right zone. The traffic. It's Commerce Drive. It's, it, it goes the way it goes with the uses it has now. Um, so it's not going to probably, it's not going to impinge. You don't have access onto Dahmer or anything like that. That concerns me less. So let's bring it as a nice tight package where we can say what the height of things are and how many you know, specifics. Because I think that's another thing that I struggle with, and I'm sure other board members do, is when we give you preliminary and final for a site, and then you know you run into issues like this, and the site changes, right? So that's why I was most concerned about that tonight. So is that possible to bring everything back at once? We'll, we'll take a hard look. There's some uh, logistical re business reasons why it may not be possible, okay. but I'm not going to sit here and tell you that we will not do that. We will take a hard look at the phasing of the application uh, as well as the building itself. Uh, yeah, April 3rd works for us. Okay. I just have a notice question. Did you notice? for only preliminary for the building? Uh, then yes, that's correct. May have to re-notice, so let's keep that open. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you and I can discuss you. that between yeah. now right, and then if we need to re-notice. Okay. And Mr. Chairman, if I could suggest too, I, I think a meeting with, with your team and with myself and particularly Darren from, from CME, um, I think we have some direction from the board. You've testified to how you know, you're going to change the plans. Um, I think um, I think there's still some confusion about the phasing and the need for the phasing. Um, so I think we might be able to, you know, between those things, you know, perhaps you, you could you have the time then to prepare revised plans. Yeah, that that's why um, we would would like to go to April uh, rather than February, so that we have time to prepare some revised plans. And thank you for suggesting a meeting because we were actually going to reach out to request a meeting as yeah, well. Yeah, so we can. So you. you you guys have my information. You can just reach out to me. We can, you know, meet whenever you wish. Um, and then you also do have time again if it switches. So they're asking for a preliminary and final. You'll have time to, act, you know, re-notice, right. you know, for that April third. So right. Yeah, that sounds good to me. So um, yes. why don't you want to announce that like formally now, just in case they don't have to re-notice? And if they do, well, that'll take right. care of itself. Okay, so L'Oreal USA Products Incorporated, docket number PLN 21000021, is going to be carried until April 3rd, 2024, being heard here at the Municipal Building 475 DeMott Lane, 7.30 p.m. 
on April 3rd is a Wednesday. Um, I will carry it, uh, Sean, with um, no need to notice right now. If you do, as they've discussed, if you do feel that you need to re-notice, you can just do so at that time. It, right. we, you know, but at least this protects you until then. Exactly. That's also, what we're looking for. Thank and you. And subject to and receiving, I'm, I'm sorry, Christine, subject to receiving a letter extending the board's time to okay. act until April 3. That's what I'm I was sorry. just going to say. Thank you. Um, Mark just came and made a good point. There are a couple, I think, people here that are not associated with the applicant. And since we did have, you know, a fair amount of testimony tonight, and, and maybe the applicant can receive additional direction or, or some neighborhood input um, to open the meeting to the public for, for some comments. So um, I want to do that. So with that, I'll, I'll um, propose opening the meeting to the public. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone wishing to come up, please use the microphone. Uh, state your name and address. And, and to be clear, uh, Mr. Chairman, corrected. This would be questions of the architect and, and the engineer, correct? Based on the testimony they've provided. That's exactly what I was going to do. Just tap that. Make sure it's all right. We're good. Okay. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dorothy Gehring Samovar. I live at 61 Dama Road in Somerset. Um, and I wanted to bring up that uh, we on Dama Road. Are, Miss, are excuse me one minute. Can you just spell your last name for the recording it's secretary? G O E H R I N G hyphen S O M A L W A R. Um, and it's from 61 Dama Road. So I wanted to say that, you know, we on Dama Road are a bit concerned when I look at the picture there, um, it looks like a good bit of tree coverage on Dama Road where they're putting in the new parking lot um, is going to be reduced by the, the drainage system. Um, we're a bit concerned about noise on our side as well. Um, we do get parking lot noise. We hear the backup beeps of the trucks going into the loading docks. Uh, we hear the fans and the trees help. Um, so we're a little bit concerned that there might be a reduction of those noise canceling trees on our side as well. Um, and, and that with more parking, more loading docks, more fans, we might have more noise, um, but not have the buffer that's there right now. Um. Thank you. Uh, Sunil Somalwar, same address, 61 Dharma Road, last name S-O-M-A-L-W-A-R. Uh, first and foremost, thank you very much. While we sit at home and watch Netflix, that you guys are here looking after our interests. <laughs> so, although I don't come here too often now that I'm here and watching all this, I'm very, very happy that you are guarding, looking after our interests. I do have a um, couple of questions of the applicants, uh, more of the nature of clarification. Um, because the application has changed and evolved as of only a few days ago when we're trying to look, look it up and all that, I just want to uh, understand what's going on. The way you described it is that there are some wetlands over there, they're shallow, they're trying to grow, and although you mentioned the pond, the pond is not where the wetlands are. You are going to fill in the wetlands, build a parking area over there, and move the pond elsewhere, is that right? Mr. Thomas. So actually, this is the area where the wetland is. Mm -hmm. And we are, this is where the water sits currently on the property today. So we are putting the basin where the wetland is. Okay. Some of the changes we are proposing, and it's not reflected on this plan, would be to eliminate these parking spaces and move this basin further to the right or to the east of the plan and restore the buffer along Dahmer. So, okay. so I was under the wrong impression. So the, where the wetlands are, there will be still trees? Yes. Okay. Thank yeah. you. We would have to fill the wetlands and then we're going to go back and revegetate it with native species. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and second question I have is, uh, again, this is not a comprehensive application at this stage. I understand that. But with more intensive use of this um, site, 
as my wife mentioned, right now we do suffer from the 24-7 fans running. Um, but the second issue is that those fans, I think, do have some toxic release inventory in, with the DEP. With the more intensive use and expansion, should we expect toxic releases to go up as well? Are you going to make any modifications in that regard? I really can't speak um, <coughs> to any of that about the current operation, what kind of release is happening of the facility. That is beyond my area of expertise. Okay, so maybe as a part of the comprehensive uh, package that should be taken into account. I think there is a permit uh, on file at the DEP, but I'm not an expert in this. I don't know how old it is. I don't know how much is exercise, and naturally, living you know, within 100 feet of, this, of those fans, I am concerned about what comes out of those fans. I understand it may not be that much at a given time, but it, these things do accumulate over time. Uh, thank you again. So with regard to that question, is there somebody from either the applicant or the, I don't know if the architect handles that, but somebody from the, from the applicant that understands what type of permitting or licensing or if it's some, is there something from the DEP that handles those issues? I understand it's not the site engineer. Yeah, so something like this, I mean, if there's an active permit with DEP, DEP will have jurisdiction over the site and there is a, a, a an inspection period and a permit that needs to be reviewed, renewed. So uh, someone from L'Oreal would might be able to answer that or they might have other professionals engaged to handle that type of permit uh, with the state. We'll look into that and, and when we come back in front of the board, we'll have that information available uh, to the board and, and to the public as well. And, and just for the, so just so you understand, at the end of the day, as far as um, if there needs to be some type of mechanical treatment or something to handle what comes out of the building, that's not within the board's jurisdiction. But they said that they'll, they'll provide an answer to that so you have an understanding of what's going to be required of them. Sorry. Um, yeah, no, that, that sounds good. It's well, well put, Mark. Thanks. I live with can you just speak right into the microphone? Can okay. you say that one more time just so that pick picks up, Winston? Yeah, my name is Winston Belmar. You hear me? Okay. I, pardon? Oh, B-E-L-M-A-R. B-E-L-M-A-R. First name is Winston, W-I-N-S-T-O-N. Been living at <clears throat> 69 Dalmar Road for over 20 years. Um, the first question, and... I'm into information overload here. I am an engineer, but I, I need to be schooled and uh, hold my hand and carry me through the process. But uh, more importantly, what I'd like to find out is um, what I gathered that the stormwater wetlands going to be preceding that of the expansion. Is that correct? That is the intent. That is that, correct. That's the intent. Okay, so if you look at the plan um, holistically, assuming that permits and everything are approved, what would be the fast track approach to getting the stormwater facility up and running when you permits, you're looking at one year down the road or two years down the road? What's the, time to, what's the timeline for this? Uh, we do have the permit for the state for the area in question, I'm assuming the area in question is this area here along Dahmer. So we do have the B approval. Usually that is the longest thing to obtain. It took over uh, six or nine months to get that permit from the state. Um, uh, how long it takes to construct it after receiving all the permits, something like this will probably take two to three months for to construct the basin, revegetate it, that sort of thing. So you're looking at six months from the time permits are approved, you break ground, and then you have the facility fun fully functional. Or the basin itself, correct. That, that's a good estimate. Okay. And then move, moving ahead, we talked about and roughly 47,000 square feet of, of facility, and then you have um, up. Um, what do you envisage would be the overall decibel level in terms of noise that would be, uh, because I am concerned about 
um, decibel level. As a neighbor, I would say the, the decibel level from the plant is just marginally acceptable. And if it's been augmented, then it becomes, I think someone, I even I think the talking about the quality of life. I am concerned about the quality of life. But more importantly, I've done some research about stormwater. Things that concern me, what are the challenges? I know you're a good, reputable engineering firm. There are challenges. And the challenges, my research indicated that water quality impact, habitat impact, health and safety, logistics and maintenance. Maintenance is a big one. Nuisances, mosquitoes, uh, habitation and so I'm overall concerned about animals. But, well, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Thomas, maybe you should answer some of the questions. But um, you know, I know that a lot of these improvements are uh, fully intended to improve some of the issues that you just mentioned. Mr. Thomas, maybe you could expound on that. Yeah. So, so the the maintenance um, <laughs> there is a mechanism that is required by the township and the state that proper maintenance of stormwater management. Uh, it's a maintenance plan that gets filed in the courthouse. It's recorded, and an annual inspection is required by the facility. That is a state mandate, uh, and the township have adapted that. And every application in the state uh, requires that, that level of commitment and the maintenance on the plans. As for the basins, we have one, two, three, four, five. We have five separate basins throughout the property to manage the stormwater management runoff. And those areas are the areas um, shown um, along these areas represent all the stormwater management patients. The state adopted new regulation that encourage uh, what's called green infrastructure uh, that encourages um, trying to infiltrate the water back into the ground uh, in certain areas trying to make mimic existing condition. Uh, trying to infiltrate the water near the source, not carry it and store it in a larger basin like what they used to do uh, um, in, in the past. So these standards are implemented uh, on this plan and they also limit the contributing area to each basin. Each one of these basins cannot have more than two and a half acres. So if you have a 10 acre site, that means at a minimum you need minimum four basins just to meet the current standards that, that was adopted a couple of years ago. And that's what this plan reflects. Uh, I would love to have one large basin in isolated areas and direct everything. DEP took that away uh, a couple of years ago. So all that is taken into account. Uh, proper engineering practices that complies with the state standards and the township standards are actually shown and implemented on this plan. Let me understand, as I said, this is the there are five basins around in the entire plant. Correct. So we send, can you get close to the microphone? Because we, we do record the meetings and we have to take okay. minutes and our, we have a recording secretary and we need back okay. away and we can't hear you. So there are five basins that would surround the peripheral of the plant, overall plant. Correct. And, and the basin location is not arbitrary. So <clears throat> we had to, when, when you design a basin throughout a site, you have to engage a geotech like an engineer to establish certain parameters of the existing sorts. So we locate, we've done some preliminary testing, and based on the soil condition of the property, these are the soil condition that allow infiltration needed to meet the state requirement. Um, and that's why these basins are located on those locations. Um, we engage a uh, geotechnical engineer, they come in, they dig some exploratory holes, and they classify the soil, whether it's permeable soil, suitable soil for infiltration, and what have you. And that was completed for each one of these areas. So each one of these areas, would you see or engage or experience like blockage? That's one of the my research indicated blockage is a, is a, a major drawback surrounding the op operability of these uh, facilities and 
so you end up with with pools and with pools you um, mosquito breed in, you know. Interesting. You just don't see it for the I thought overall you were gonna you were gonna move all the water into one primary location, but what I'm saying it would surround the entire so um, you don't have maintenance of a hundred percent and you start generating blockage within the system risk what are so so I can I can address that so interesting interesting you say that because that's what actually we're trying to remedy with the existing condition so these basins are infiltration basins allow the water to infiltrate through the ground in the event that these basin have blockage and the water does not infiltrate into the ground these basins are connected like the basin on Dahmer has a, a, a relief pipe a drainage pipe that connects to the existing drainage pipes along Dahmer. Is that close to me? <laughs> um, that is on Dahmer. I'm not quite sure. Oh, 69. Um, and then the other basins are actually interconnected through a drainage system. Uh, all these basins are interconnected, discharged to the existing basin where the solar field is, and ultimately discharged to the regional basin uh, on the opposite side of Commerce. So all these basins are interconnected, and they have a I don't want to call it a fail-safe, it's like a, a, back, a, a secondary relief in the event of blockage that the water will get conveyed through the pipes to the regional drainage opposite commerce. Right, and I mean, that, that's what I was going to say is that, you know, according to what I read in CME's report, there's not a lot of recharge in your soils, right? Correct. Um, actually, there's zero. So the recharge would happen through conveying it to the regional basins. But why don't we just, um, you know, uh, Mr. Belmar, we would like to, you know, let the applicant um, reconsider their plan. Maybe this will change. Um, but your input in general, um, you know, was valuable for the applicant to hear in terms of, um, you know, obviously you have to comply with the state, right, with the, reducing the existing condition and 50 and 100 year storms. Um, you know, we, we all are familiar with this on the board. <clears throat> so you have to meet the state standards. And in terms of maintenance, <clears throat> they're your basins. They're not deeded to the township or anything like that. So you would maintain them as you maintain what you have on site now. Correct. Right. So why don't we just hold that thought for when they come back. And you I just wanted to make sure the public was able to give input. And, and do you have any other, um, other issues that you'd like to bring well, up I besides the... I think it's very informative, mm -hmm. you know, um, but I just want to underscore the importance of maintenance. Okay. Because all my research really underlined the severity of poor maintenance, you know, and uh, I, I can quote, this is resulting in storm water clogging at discharge outlets, mm -hmm. micro pools or small pools at the outlets become a mosquito breeding ground. Mr. Chairman, um, just to interject here, no, as I said in my opening, uh, you know, L'Oreal prides itself on being uh, very environmentally friendly and from direction all the way from its corporate headquarters in Paris down to its manufacturing facilities in uh, New Jersey and throughout the world, uh, the direction is to be a sustainable company and to ensure that these things don't happen. My point being is that every applicant is required, uh, as Mr. Tamu said, it's recorded in the clerk's office, a stormwater maintenance uh, requirement, and every applicant uh, has to record that um, and in this case, the applicant from a corporate culture is absolutely committed to maintaining uh, it, the requirements that it's that it, it, it's agreeing right. to. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's 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 hold any more comments for the rest of the application. But thank you, thank Mr. You Belmont, much. for your yeah, input. So thank you. Um, seeing no other um, comments from the public, uh, move to close. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. So we have, um, Christine has already announced this continuation to April 3rd, um, if there is um, to be re-noticed because uh, of changes in the logistics of it, and the applicant will re-notice, but everybody's been noticed tonight um, for April 3rd. Um, we have uh, one more meeting on, um, what date is it? December? December 20th. December 20th. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, hopefully we'll see everybody then. and. Uh, 
Well, with that, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second.